Good afternoon, everyone. Joshua Severe Weather, and happy Friday to you. I hope everybody's had a great week. We continue to monitor a potential storm that has impacts for the Northwest Caribbean later this weekend into early next week, and then the Gulf of Mexico, when I do believe it's going to have a chance to strengthen uh, potentially into a hurricane or at the very least a strong tropical storm. Uh, I'm going to share in my video the latest on this potential system for next week, what we know, what we don't yet know, and some potential scenarios. And still know that until this system does in fact form, uh, this forecast that you see today is still evolving and will potentially still change. Uh, but we continue to have a strong signal on our models today that something will get going here in the next few days and move into the Gulf during the uh, middle to second portion of next week and maybe stick around into the weekend as well. That area has a 40% chance of developing into a tropical depression or storm over the next seven days uh, from the National Hurricane Center. I personally believe that chance is going to be climbing as we get past the weekend, but right now the storm has not yet formed. So for now, those chances are just medium. We do have two other areas we're tracking, the remains of Gordon. Uh, kind of a zombie storm that may try to come back, may not. And then an Invest 96L. Both of those, though, have low chances of redeveloping or developing into tropical systems, but something we'll still watch. Across the United States, uh, things are a little bit quieter for the time being. We still have a trough across the eastern U.S. and some rain over portions of the coastal northeast. Some scattered showers are going to pop up later today. We do have a vigorous trough moving through the Great Lakes that's brought some thunderstorms with it. There is a a marginal risk. We'll see a little severe weather later on here in parts of the eastern Great Lakes shifting into the Appalachian region here by the weekend. Uh, and then we've got another trough moving into the northwest. And you will notice that unlike a few weeks ago, we don't have the death ridge in place that keeps systems south of the United States. With more and more of these troughs, uh, there are uh, avenues for systems that could form down near and south of the Gulf to try to come up as these troughs dig down. Uh, this becomes more common this time of the year. We get cold fronts that move all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico, but they don't always get as far south as we'd like. They get stuck down there, and those remnant fronts and tropical moisture can often mean trouble. We saw that with Francine here earlier last week, and I suspect we're going to see a situation like that again. So here's a look at the tropics close to North America, uh, and you'll notice that uh, things are starting to flare up now, finally, across the western and especially southwestern Caribbean. And we continue to have flare-ups on the Pacific side as well. We are heading into a phase of what's called the Madden-Julian Oscillation, which favors uh, rising air and more thunderstorm development on this side of the world. For uh, a couple of weeks overall, it was on the other side, but now it is starting to shift back to where we are going to see more development closer to land here, potentially. And uh, the reason why is that the sinking air we've had across um, this portion of the uh, world uh, that has been in place is beginning to give way to more rising motion. And you can see that here in just the last uh, 12 hours, things are definitely taking more shape here. We don't have any kind of defined circulation, uh, but we definitely have more heavy rain near Costa Rica and Panama, near eastern uh, portions of Honduras and Nicaragua, and even sneaking up uh, closer to the Cayman Islands and the Yucatan today. We also have heavier showers and storms on the Pacific side. So a very wet setup here through the weekend over the southwestern and western Caribbean and the far eastern Pacific. Uh, as we head on uh, into and look at the visible here as well, you can see again, it's very disorganized, uh, but definitely uh, favoring more rainfall activity. And all this moisture that's down here in the western Caribbean is eventually going to have to go somewhere. And our model guidance continues to show a strong signal that no matter what forms, where it forms, how intense it gets, this moisture does have a lane to come northward. Uh, so those of you that are watching here from Jamaica, western and central Cuba, south and central Florida, even the Bahamas and the Cayman Islands, and of course Central America, including Belize, Guatemala, and Mexico, are nonetheless, no matter what happens between now and say next week, you're going to have a lot more rain coming here. And that's fairly common as we get into the latter months, or the latter portion of September into October, the latter months of the hurricane season. Now let's take a look here at the uh, east coast of the United States. We do have a weak area of low pressure in here. It's kind of drifting around here north and west of Bermuda. Uh, there is a boundary, a front that continues to kind of sit over the northwest Bahamas and moisture continues to feed out of the southwest. This is Bermuda and you are going to get some of this moisture here. At the same time, if you're in Bermuda, you're also watching this feature to the southeast of you that is heading in your direction. Uh, so definitely going to be getting wetter here in Bermuda, Atlantic Canada. 
you're going to get some of this moisture, but it appears that the heaviest rains are going to clip uh, the Cape Race and Avalon Peninsula in Newfoundland. Here's a look at the Central Atlantic. Pretty quiet for the islands, um, as you might expect here. Everything is pretty much west of you. Uh, still very disorganized thunderstorm activity with both of these features that we're watching, 96L and the remains of Gordon. Uh, and uh, I just find it hard to believe that either of these is going to develop. Uh, and you can see here with the remains of Gordon, there is a low level swirl still. Uh, so in theory, this is still a low pressure system, even though it's not uh, technically a tropical depression, but it may get closed still uh, with this circulation. But the wind shear has caused all of the intense rain and thunderstorms to advance well away from the east. So there's an argument as well that this is not a tropical depression. It may have the swirl with it, but everything is sheared apart to the right. I've seen things that look worse get named, but again, I'm not the National Hurricane Center. I am just a meteorologist, and I'm just going to show you my interpretation. Uh, at the same time, you have 96L, which kind of lacks a central core at this point, uh, but does have a spin with it. Finally, over the eastern Atlantic, things are still fairly quiet. The water's cooler. It's more stable here, uh, but we do have waves that will come off of Africa that may try to develop here as we get into more of a phase of the Mad Julian, Julian Oscillation that favors that. So we've talked about the Central American gyre taking place here. Right now, it is not yet set up. We have this intense trough that is digging through uh, the eastern states all the way down into the Northwest Caribbean, producing unfavorable winds aloft for development. Uh, but as we move on past Saturday night and Sunday, uh, you will see that this trough does lift out and we get into a more favorable spot here where an anti-cyclone aloft forms. This is the gyre where you've got kind of the circulation here that goes around this area of high pressure. And um, the GFS is indicating there'll be potential development both on the Pacific Riviera side, as well as in the Northwest Caribbean side of this. And the reason why is, and I mentioned this yesterday, but I'll repeat it, um, that we have a place for storms to not only grow, but ventilate and expand on all sides. When the wind shear is strong uh, and you have fast flow, that usually kills off our chances for development. But as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, uh, you'll see whatever does form here has a place to grow with uh, channels here that allow this system to expand and grow. Uh, the one thing that makes this extremely questionable is the interaction with the Yucatan Peninsula. If storms can manage to avoid that to the right, then they've got a great chance of developing. We've seen that with storms that have come up, uh, such as Michael back in 2018, even Ivan or Ian, well, Ivan as well, uh, where the storms, if they kind of shoot this gap in here, then they get into an area where the hottest water sits and they avoid land masses have a chance to quickly intensify. But if this low tries to form in here, it's going to be struggling for a little while, despite the favorable upper level uh, dynamics of it and may take longer to develop. Uh, it eventually could as it gets into here, but it's going to take longer for that to occur. So that is probably our biggest question mark. If we look at the ensembles and we just take a peek at what the upper level pattern looks like, the trough on the east coast is going to lift out, but the next one that's over the southwest is going to move right back in. High pressure will build in north of this, keeping the Gulf protected for the first portion of next week. But for the second portion of next week, we are going to have a front dropping south. You see this big trough here? That's going to send cooler air all the way down into the western, or at least drier air into the western Gulf. At the same time, the flow aloft becomes more south to north or southwest to northeast. So if something does form in here, it's not going to be able to uh, move west underneath because of this trough. It'll get lifted up somewhere in this direction. Tough to say exactly how that plays out, but anywhere in this area, I think, is in play at this point due to this position of the trough here later next week. We have some timing differences as well amongst our models. Some have this trough stronger. They pick up our storm very quickly. They give it less of an opportunity to, um, to develop into a stronger storm and just zip it quickly up Thursday into Friday of next week. Others take longer and have the system in the Gulf uh, right up through next weekend, uh, waiting for the next trough. And because of that, there's just still way too much uncertainty on this. But what I will say is because of the upper level uh, support that we're going to have, that anti-cyclone, that gyre, uh, if we get something to form, it's going to be favorable to where that hot water will allow it to strengthen. And so I do think there's a decent chance here, probably even a pretty good chance this turns into a hurricane uh, at some point here later next week. Hence the reason I put this video out in the first place. Here's a look at our ensemble probabilities of development. And you'll see they start to climb as we get to Monday and Tuesday of next week here in the Northwest Caribbean. 
and then perhaps over the Yucatan, the southern Gulf, or even advancing all the way up into the northern Gulf here late next week, as soon as perhaps uh, Friday, but maybe more likely on the European over the weekend when this could potentially move in. Now, the GFS is faster on that, as you'll see. Here are the ensemble positions next Sunday night, the 29th. Again, it's a 10-day forecast, so you can see there's a great amount of spread, but uh, there are several ensemble solutions that have this as a hurricane across this region here in the central and northeast Gulf. Uh, there are several solutions that keep it stuck down in here for longer. They miss that first trough. That is also a possibility. And I think we're going to be able to start to narrow this down more as we get into early next week. Probably Monday and Tuesday, we're going to have a better feel for how this is exactly is going to play out. Here's the European ensembles, and you can see there is some agreement, albeit look at this spread here, that we have a developed system heading into the northeastern Gulf. The time frame here, again, is going to be at the end of next weekend. It's possible that this could evolve a little bit quicker, and this comes in Friday or Saturday, but this is a look at Sunday. At the same time, we still have several solutions that keep the system in the southwest Gulf in a familiar spot for those that remember Francine just last week. Uh, if this happens, it doesn't mean that this is going west necessarily. Remember, fronts love to come down in here, and there will be another one. Uh, it just means that this system stews around longer and gives us more uncertainty. Eventually, I think it does maybe try to pull this way or even this way. And again, um, don't rule this out completely in Texas. I just think you're a lot less likely than Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida at this point. Uh, here's a look at the operational GFS. There's a new one coming in, um, but I have to get this video done now. Uh, you can see low pressure doesn't really necessarily form until we get to Tuesday night or Wednesday. Uh, but once it does and clips the Yucatan, it is taking off and intensifying next Thursday. This GFS run is slower, but it does have a hurricane moving up towards the central Gulf Coast. Uh, the GF, don't get, don't get fixed on this one model. This one has it clipping the mouth of the Mississippi and hitting near Gulfport and Mobile on Saturday night, Sunday morning. Uh, again, this model has shown us that it is not very consistent. The model run before was so much quicker. It was in a similar spot and it was weaker. The model run before was extremely farther to the east and quicker with Tampa. And the model run before that uh, showed a very bad situation for Tampa. So you can see it's jumping all over the place. It's like throwing darts at a dartboard, seeing where things will stick. Uh, but again, I have seen enough consistency to make me think that the northeastern Gulf, including all the Florida Peninsula, the Panhandle, back to Louisiana would be potentially our target zone. But we've got a while before it develops. The newer GFS is coming in, and you can see it doesn't even have a form system before next Tuesday morning. Uh, the European from earlier today, excuse me, uh, will, is, continues to be kind of in line with where the previous European runs were. And instead of forming it on the eastern side of the Yucatan, instead, it takes it across and forms it over the southwestern Gulf. Still potentially dangerous, but slower. And as a result, uh, we see a lot of rain across Florida for a lot longer period here right through next weekend. But a system that uh, at this point may not get scooped up until the very end of September or even the first couple of days of October. The AI forecast, this is also the European, does show development Tuesday into Wednesday on the eastern side of the Yucatan. And this kind of follows in line with the GFS. It's a little farther to the right, but this has landfall in Panama City by Friday morning, uh, kind of in between all the other solutions we've seen. The Canadian is kind of in line with that as well. It's a little farther west, uh, but does have it coming up towards the Florida Gulf Coast and maybe Alabama here by next Friday. Uh, it does not, and the Canadian's not the best tropical model, I will say that. It has been showing a storm longer than most of the other models. Uh, but you can see it is struggling here with some dry air and some unfavorable upper level development. But it still brings a lot of rain and a lot of moisture up uh, into Alabama, Florida, Georgia, maybe Mississippi and southeast Louisiana. Again, until this forms, these models will continue to bounce around and we can show every single one, but just know that they're going to continue to change. Finally, the ICON model uh, is kind of in agreement with that Euro AI, that Canadian bringing it up here to the Florida panhandle. And uh, it has a, a stronger tropical storm uh, because it is faster. It only spends a couple days over the Gulf, so it doesn't have as much time to strengthen, but does have that landfall here late next week, Thursday night and Friday. So we're going to obviously have more time to watch this. Things are probably going to change more. All I can really do is just kind of show you the latest, what I'm thinking, how it's developing. Uh, but honestly, um, this weekend, as I do more videos for you, I don't think we're going to be talking about 
a huge shift in ideas until the system actually forms. And then we could see some more significant changes as we get to the first portion of next week. Here's the remains of Gordon. You can see very high wind shear. Here's 96L, less wind shear, but lacking the thunderstorms, although they are starting to flare back up. 96L keeps us east of Bermuda, which um, if I can kind of pull out my mouse, Bermuda is actually over in here somewhere. Keeps it east of you guys and uh, just tracks it north. Very limited chance for this to develop. Uh, and you can see on the GFS from earlier, not really a whole lot of development. Actually, this low that comes down from the northeast kind of overtakes those. Now, it is showing some development in the deep tropics, but it's been very inconsistent. A couple of waves that we need to watch here, maybe next weekend and beyond. Uh, both of those right now look to be fish storms that will recurve. Uh, but you can see because we're heading into a more favorable phase, GFS is starting to show more action as we get into early October in places that were shut down here over the end of August and the first portion of September, which was completely unexpected, I think, by every meteorologist that's ever forecast uh, for this season. Here's a European model. Again, it looks different than the GFS. Uh, it does show one or two storms popping up here, but uh, these are unlikely to threaten land at this point. And the Canadian is also uh, showing hints that there may be one or two systems here, maybe even a third one, uh, generally moving to the west-northwest. Uh, finally, the ICON model, this one just move, making its way in here. Uh, it is trying to develop this 96L, but you can see it isn't going to last long. It does not uh, develop Gordon here by next Monday. And then you can see it is trying to develop systems coming off of Africa later next week, but they're already gaining latitude and unlikely to be a threat to land. Uh, so that's what we've got here, 96L. Disturbance one, which is the remains of Gordon. Uh, you can see waves coming off of Africa right now, not going to develop later in the week. Next week they could. 40% area and then a possible uh, area of, of development here in the Eastern Pacific. There may be one right behind it. And then the Western Pacific has been super active as well. And just so you guys know here in the Gulf, um, we're seeing storm after storm in above average water hitting the same places. We've had multiple storms. Uh, hitting China and uh, Okinawa and Vietnam and Hanoi and uh, Laos. Uh, the water there is just as warm with respect to average as the water in the Gulf. Uh, so what that means is uh, we may not be done in the Gulf yet. Uh, once the phase that is bringing all of these storms in the Western Pacific comes over and sits around into the Gulf and Caribbean here in the next few weeks, uh, again, we may have the gyre reload. We may have more action here. Uh, so we had Francine last week. That doesn't mean we can't have a couple more in the Gulf this season. I fully expect we're going to have at least one more. Uh, so just something to keep in mind that I watch what happens across the world and how the teleconnections play out. Uh, but for the time being, Shanghai has again had a storm, this one a lot weaker. It is actually moving back over the East China Sea and the Yellow Sea heading towards Korea. It will weaken. Another feature to watch behind it, and we're continuing to get flooded here across Southeast Asia. Here's a system leaving Shanghai. So instead of going into the same areas that got hit last week, it is turning back out and it may try to re-strengthen as it heads towards Southwestern Korea and Chechu here in South Korea. So I appreciate everybody's time today. I gotta get running, but I hope you all have a blessed Friday. I thank you all for your time. Uh, if you've not become a subscriber and you are into the weather and you wanna know what's gonna happen, not just tomorrow, but down the road, I advise you to become a subscriber and share with your friends as well. I, I would appreciate if you did that. Uh, even though I'm a meteorologist, I am first and foremost a child of God and a Christian. I want to give my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, all the honor and glory for just giving me this opportunity. Uh, God is good no matter what you guys believe. He's been great to me. And Jesus is my best friend. I know he'll never let me down. Um, in the book of John, uh, 1510, Jesus says, if you keep my commands and you remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love, I have told you that this, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. And I just want to become a, a friend of Jesus knowing that there is joy in Jesus, and the Lord is good, and there's a lot of evil, and the enemy wants to hold you away from that. He wants you to not believe that. Many people have drifted away from that or never believed it, uh, but I still truly believe that God is good, and that I'm here for a reason. That's to encourage you and lift you up in any prayer requests that you may have. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful Friday, and I will, again, catch up with you all tomorrow here, and uh, as always, make it a good one. See you soon.